How to Sew the Iron Carry Mat by Amber Makes, available in two beautiful sewing theme prints, vintage sewing and red work. Follow the tutorial to see how to make your beautiful iron carry mat. Cutting out. Take the fabric canvas piece from your kit and you will also have a piece of heat resistant fabric. This got silver on one side and a fleece backing on the other. Open up your canvas fabric piece and give it a press to remove any creases before you cut it out. You can see all the pieces are printed on here. This is the carry mat outer, which has printed lines on it that you're going to sew along later. And you'll also see a dashed line, that's for cutting, you need to cut along that. The inner line is for sewing, but at this stage you need to cut along the outer dashed line. This just gives you an extra allowance when you're quilting. There are also four binding strips cut around the outer edge of these. There's a label that you can add if you want to and two handles cut along the outer edge of these. All the seam allowances are included in all the pieces. So you can see here I've cut along the outer dashed line. That's important at this stage to give you some extra allowance. I've cut out the binding strips, there's four of those, so put those to one side for now. And I've also cut out the two handles and pinned the labels to them so I remember. And there's the optional label you can add later. You'll also need some wadding, a natural wadding like cotton or bamboo is ideal. It just gives it a little bit more heat resistant and a bit of softness. You'll need two pieces of elastic and two buttons. The measurements for all these pieces are listed in your instructions. Sewing the layers. Take the heat resistant fabric and lay it out flat. Give it a nice press to remove any of the creases. And then with your hands, smooth it out flat. Or if you've got a long rotary cutting ruler, this is the easiest thing I find. Just smooth it across and make sure it's flat. If you can't remove the creases, spray a little water on the silver side and that will help. Now take the piece of wadding the measurements for this, as I said before, are included in the instructions and place that centrally on top of the fleecy side of the heat resistance. So you've got the silver side right sides down and you've got the wadding on top of the fleecy side. Again, smooth it out using your hands or a ruler to remove any creases because you want it all nice and flat. Now take the carry mat outer and place that right sides up and centrally on top of the wadding. The wadding and the heat resistant fabric has been cut a little bit larger so that you can place this centrally. Again, smooth it out flat, making sure it's central and that you can see some wadding and heat resistant fabric around the edges. Just move it slightly if it isn't central. So you can see here, there's a little bit of wadding and heat resistant fabric extending beyond the edges of the carry mat outer all the way around. Smooth it out flat. And now you can start pinning it together. So take the pins and pin it together all the way around the outer edge. So that's the white section between the line that you've cut, the dash line and the solid line. You're going to be sewing along the solid line, so don't place pins across here. Now, when you put these pins in, you probably won't be able to get it through to the silver side. But if you just get it through the fabric, the wadding and into the fleecy backing, that's enough to hold it together. So don't worry if you can't get it through to the silver side. I couldn't, but the pin does just pick up. Now you need to pin it together through the centre. Don't put any pins where those marked lines are that are printed because those are sewing lines and it means that if you don't put pins there, you don't have to take them. So put a couple of pins in each section between the marked lines and again, remember, you won't be able to get it through to the silver side, so just get it through. If you find that it's hard getting the pins through, just lift it up and by bending it slightly, you'll be able to do it. So once it's pinned all the way round, like I've done here, you then need to sew. So sew along the outer line, and you also need to sew along these printed lines. 
work out a route so that you have less reverse stitching. So I work, stitched along the V's, as I'm showing you here, starting on the outer edge, working the V, and then working back to the outer edge. This is to reduce the amount of reverse stitching. So if you work the final V, then work along these long lines, so down the line, across the centre, and up the other line. Then, st starting on the outer edge, stitch along this slope line, across the centre, along the other line. Now, all your stitching starts and finishing on the outer edge, except for these two short signs of the centre rectangle, where you will need to reverse stitching. But it just makes it neater that you'll have less reverse stitching on the back. Now, once you've stitched along there, follow the instructions for some tips about using the stitch length and a walking foot. I used a 3.5 stitch length for mine. Once you've done that, give it a good press. Press it from the carry mat outer fabric side just to remove any creases and also to set the stitch lines. Now you need to trim. So what you need to do is trim close to that stitch line. I trimmed it eighth of an inch outside the stitch line. So you don't want to cut through the stitching but you also need to leave less than a quarter of an inch because we're going to bind this edge later with a quarter inch binding. So about an eighth of an inch, trim through all three layers all the way round. And you can see I've sewn through to the silver side and it's all ready now. Making the handles. Take one of the handle strips, you can remove the label now, and fold it in half lengthways with right sides facing. Match up the long raw edges and pin together at one end and then pin together at the other end. This means that the short edges will match as well. And then pop a pin in the center. Make sure those raw edges are matching up. Now sew together along this long edge. You now need to turn the tube right sides out. So I've tacked across one end because I'm going to use a turning tube. If you've got a turning tube set, then put the plastic tube into one end of the handle, take the stick that comes with your turning tube set, and taking the blunt end, push the handle through. If you don't have a turning tube set, you'll just have to turn it right sides out, but this is a quicker and easier way to do it. And then remove the tacking stitches at that end. Now press the handle so that the seam sits right on the edge, and then there's a fold at the bottom, and press it all the way along. And then it will look like this. So it's nice and flat. Now top stitch along both long edges to neaten and also hold them together. Once that's done, that's one handle finished. Repeat this process to make the other handle in exactly the same way. Attaching the handles. Take the long edge of your carry mat and we need to make some measurements. So you can see those two diagonal lines that are along the centre of that long edge. Now take your tape measure and measure one and a half inches inward, so to the right of the first line that's on the left hand side and mark it with a pin. So one and a half inches inwards and then measure one and a half inches inwards from the other diagonal line. So you can see these are the two long diagonal lines that come out on one of the long sides. Doesn't matter which long side at the moment. Now take one of your carry mat handles just check you've got it the right way up by laying it like that and making sure the words go the right direction. And then place the outer edge of one short end of the handle so it's level with that pin. So the outer edge is now one and a half inches from the same diagonal line. And then pin it a little bit further down. This is just to keep it straight during assembly. So about an inch, inch and a half down. Now making sure the handle isn't twisted, place the other short end, the outer edge of it, at the other pin and pin it together across the top and then a little bit further down. So the outer edges of your handle are now positioned one and a half inches in from those diagonal sewn lines. Now tack it into place across the top and then a bit further down just to hold it straight using a long tacking stitch. Once that's done, it will look like this. You can see the handle's facing the right way. Turn the carry mat round and pin and tack the other handle to the other long side in exactly the same positions. Attaching the elastic. On the right hand short side of your carry mat, can you see where the centre point is between those two diagonal lines? You need to mark this centre with a pin. 
So this will be the centre of that short edge. But if you measure between those two short lines and mark that with a pin, that will be the centre. Now, again, take your tape measure and measure seven and a half inches up from that centre pin, up the short straight side. You can see that the seven and a half inch mark is just where the, cur the corner starts to curve. Now, to, for the other elastic marking, measure seven and a half inches downwards from that centre pin. Again, this is where the carry mat outer starts to, just starts to curve. So take one piece of elastic and fold it in half so that the two ends meet. And you've got, made it into a loop. Now place that loop on top of where you've placed the pin, but it needs to extend half an inch beyond the edge of the carry mat outer. The reason for this is it stops it pulling out. It's less likely to pull out if you've got some extending. So make sure it's extending a half an inch beyond the raw edges and then pin the elastic into place where you've placed that pin. I've pinned it into place at the edge and then I'm going to pin it at the other end. And this will just hold it straight. Now take the other piece of elastic, fold it in half to make it into a loop, place it where that second pin is, making sure the ends extend a half an inch beyond the raw edge, then pin it into place at the top and a little bit further down. If you make sure the pin goes through the elastic, it will hold it in place. Then tack it into place at the top and a little bit further down and do the same with the other piece of elastic. And now it will look like this. So you've got your two pieces of elastic tacked into place with the ends extending beyond. Binding the edge. Take two of the carry mat binding strips and place them right sides facing at right angles. So place one right sides up and place the other end right sides down on top so that they're at right angles, matching the top and right short edges. Now mark where the bottom point of the bottom strip meets the, with the top edge of the top strip with a little mark and then draw a diagonal line just like this. Place that binding strip back on top again matching up the top and right short edges and then pin it together either side of that drawn line. You're going to sew along the line so just make sure you pin either side and then you can keep them in place while stitching. Now sew together along that drawn diagonal line. Once that's done open up the two strips, press the seam allowance open and then trim off the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch just to reduce bulk in this area. Now just press it open again, the seam, because it will have closed a little bit while you cut it. And then turn it over and press it from the other side. Join the other two strips to this in the same way, so that you've got one long binding strip that's made up of four joined strips. Now take the carry mat and turn it over so the silver side is upwards. Now you can see this is the short edge. Just mark where the centre of the short edge is, that's between those two diagonal lines. Then measure and mark three inches above this centre point. Take the end of your binding strip and place it right sides down on top of the silver side. The short end needs to match with that top mark that's three inches above the centre. Now measure six inches below from the top, which is three inches down from the centre, and mark that with a pin. This is where you're going to start stitching. I'm going to pin the rest of the strip into place just to hold it. But that mark that's three inches below the centre or six inches below the top is where you're going to start stitching. Because you need to leave part of the strip unstitched to start with so that you can join it together later. Now all you need to do is pin the binding strip now into place all the way around. Make sure, obviously, that the right side of the binding strip is facing the silver side of the carry mat. And that the raw edges match all the way around. So pin it into place. When you get to the curved edges, which I've got here, you'll need to place more pins because it's important that the strip curves gently round the corners without any pleats or creases. So what I like to do here is place my pins vertically. That means I can get them closer together 
and also I can ease the strip round. The curve is quite a gentle curve, so you won't have any problems pulling it round as it's a straight strip, not a bias cut strip. But just ease it gently so that you don't have any pleats or creases and put your vertical pins quite close together. This You'll only have to do this on the corners. On the straight edges, you can go back to horizontal pins again. But it's worth taking a little time to get these the binding strip round the corners and also making sure that the raw edges match up and you'll get a much neater finish this way. So once you're happy that it's pinned nice and neatly, you can see I've just eased it round the corner. Then you can pin it into place down the, the straight side. So this is one of the long straight edges you'll be pinning now. So you can go back to your horizontal pins now and just make sure that the raw edges match up as you're pinning it into place. So pin it into place all the way round in the same way. Make sure that those joins between the binding strips stay open and flat as you're doing it. And pin it all the way round and then stop pinning at that six, that mark, the one that's three inches above the centre. And then sew it into place all the way round using a quarter of an inch seam allowance, again stopping at the mark that's three inches above the centre. You can now join the strips. I'm going to show you how to do this by joining them diagonally as it's neater. So the first end you started, mark where the centre is and draw a line straight across. So you left the centre pin in on that centre edge and then cut it. So you have extra allowance, but it's always good to have an extra allowance when you're joining strips. Now place the other end, so that's the top, on top and just mark where the underneath strip meets the top strip. Now you need to trim the top part to the same width as the binding. So the bit you cut off is a really good measuring tool. Lay it on top and mark it so that you can see the top part of the strip overlaps the bottom by the same width as the binding strip. Now cut that off. So you can see you've got a nice overlap here now. Now take the two ends and place them right sides facing at right angles, just like this, so you can see it's at right angles. This is the same way as you joined the binding strips. So just place them at right angles, right sides facing, and pin them together just at the top and at the bottom, away from the diagonal that we're going to draw in a minute. Now you need to draw a diagonal line in the same way as you did when you joined the strips. So just mark on the top one where the bottom one meets at that corner, and then draw a diagonal line. You can do this before, you can unpin this and draw it if you prefer, if you find it just a little bit fiddly. But I find that there's enough allowance left to be able to do this. Draw that diagonal line and then sew along it. Once that's done, you can remove the pins, trim the seam allowance, And now you've got a nice, neat diagonal join and your binding strips fit exactly across. This is the, the neatest and less bulky way of joining. You can overlap your short ends if you prefer, but I prefer to do it this way just because it's neater. But if you want to just overlap them and sew it, then that's absolutely fine. Once you've pinned it into place, matching the raw edges, then sew together, overlapping the seam at one end and the, other, and the other end. I'm just opening up the seam allowance here because it's important that that stays flat. So start stitching by overlapping at one end and overlapping at the other end. Now your binding strip is joined really neatly around the edge with a neat diagonal join. So before you turn the binding strip over to the other side, fold it upwards like this and give it a press. 
By doing this before you fold it over, you can make sure that it's pressed exactly and you don't get any little folds. This is particularly important at the curved corners. So just fold it over nicely like this and give it a press. You can do this from the silver side because that's part of your ironing mat. Once you've pressed it all the way around, turn it over to the right side of the carry mat and we're now going to turn the binding strip over. So turn the, one, the long raw edge over by a quarter of an inch and then fold that over on top of the carry mat outer so that it just overlaps the line of stitching that you made when you joined the binding strip. So fold the edge under by a quarter of an inch. You can just do this by hand. You don't need the iron at this stage because the fabric will crease quite nicely and then pin it into place again. Always make sure you just overlap, so you're just on top of that line of machine stitching. And pin it into place all the way round. You will find that when you do the curved corners, you'll need to place more pins. When you get to the handles, exactly the same, but obviously they're a little bit more bulky. But again, turn it over by a quarter of an inch and fold it on top. They're a bit more bulky, so you'll need to pull it over a little bit more to make sure it covers that line of machine stitching. Keep the second row of tacking stitches in place at this stage. We'll be removing those later. It's easier if they're held nice and flat at this stage. So I'm just showing you here pinning over on top of the handle. Obviously, you will have pinned the binding strip all the way around. When you get to the elastic, don't cut the ends off. It's really important that you leave those there because that makes the elastic stronger. So just bend them over, tuck them underneath the binding strip and then fold the binding strip on top and pin into place. The extra allowance means the elastic won't come out later when you're attaching it to the buttons. So once that's done, you can then, after it's all pinned, top stitch it into place all the way around from the right side, cl very close to the edge. And then you've got a nice, neat bound edge. Remove the tacking stitches, the second set that you had on the handles. Because these need to be facing upwards now. Now fold the handles so that they're facing upwards. And then pin them into place just at the top edge. This will mean that the handles will face the right way when you're using your carry mat. So pin them so they're facing upwards. And then stitch them across the top, close to the top edge of the binding. This will just hold them in place. So you can see here, I've stitched them just at the top edge and then do that with the other handle in exactly the same way. Stitch it so that it faces upwards. With the elastic, you can now remove that second set of tacking stitches. Make sure that you don't cut the elastic while you're doing it. So just remove those. And they can just stay like that. You don't need to sew them so they face upwards. They can just hang downwards. So just take out the second set from both of them. Finishing off. Place the carry mat with the outer fabric right side up and the short end that doesn't have the elastic loops facing you like this. Now, measure six and a half inches inwards from the right-hand long edge. So I'm just placing where, before it starts to curve, my tape measure six and a half inches in, inwards. Now I need to measure two and a half inches up from the bottom. So I'm going to place my tape measure at the pin I've marked six and a half inches in, and then just measure two and a half, I'll count that up from the bottom, and mark that with the pin. This is where the button's going to be placed. I'm just putting the pin through. You can take that top pin out now. Now, from the left-hand side, it's the same short edge. Again, measure six and a half inches inwards from the left side and put your pin there. And then where that pin is, 
measure two and a half inches up from the bottom and place a mark. And then just push the pin through so you can see where it is for sewing on the buttons. So you can make place a mark there or leave the pins in place. This is where you're going to sew on the two buttons. So to do this, take a length of sewing thread and push the needle just through the top fabric. Leave a length of a little length of thread on the end, you can cut that off later. And work two or three stitches on top of each other just to secure the end of the thread so it doesn't come on undone. That's why it's easier to leave a long length to start with. Now take your button and sew it in exactly this position where you've made those little stitches. Now you, it's better just for neatness if you only stitch through the fabric and the wadding and not right through to the silver side. You can do that if you just push the needle through. If you bend the fabric slightly like you've seen I've done here, you can bend the fabric slightly just so you get it through. If you do go through to the silver side, it really doesn't matter. It's only for neatness. Then sew the other button onto the other position in the same way. And your iron carry mat is finished, but I'm going to show you now how to fold it up. So once it's done, pop the iron in that centre rectangle and you can coil the cord on top. Now take the crease that's by it next to the handle and the other crease that's near the centre and place them so they meet up. You can see that that triangle section now flaps over. Do the same with the other one. Take that sewn line and join it up with the other sewn line and then you will, it will flap over. Once you've used this a few times, it will just do this naturally. Then loop the elastic round the button and that will hold that side into place. Now turn it round and do the same with the other side. Take the seam next to the handle and match it up with the seam at the centre and that triangle section will flap round. And do the same on the other side, the seam by the handle with the seam at the centre and it will flap round. And then just loop the elastic round the button and that will hold it all in place. You can then use the handles to carry your iron carry mat with your iron in wherever you go. When you come to use it, all you have to do is unloop the elastic from the buttons and then your mat will lie nice and flat and you can use it for pressing.